Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Kirkpatrick. I'm one of the full-time faculty members in the Interior Design Department. In this session, I want to go over with you how I use Screencast-O-Matic for video feedback in my Brightspace courses. Screencast-O-Matic is another option we have as instructors for screen capturing audio-visual feedback um, in our, in our Brightspace courses. Uh, so to get started here with Screencast-O-Matic, I thought I might mention some of the benefits I've found from using this software. Um, it is fast to install and download, get used to using, it's easy, um, and it's free. Um, it can be used on both a, a PC or a Mac. I've used it on both and haven't experienced any issues. Um, it will record your voice, of course, as well as your screen, and you also have the ability to use the webcam. Um, it will record the full screen or just a portion of the screen, and we will go over how to do that in just a moment. Um, with the free version, you have uh, the ability to trim your recordings both at the beginning and the end. Um, but the biggest thing probably is that you have the ability to save as an MP4 file um, and then directly upload that to the classroom very easily. Um, and then, of course, you can upgrade to the next plan with Screencast-O-Matic for additional editing options if that's something that you are interested in. To download the free version of the software, you can go to this website, screencastomatic.com forward slash download. This is what the page will look like, and you will simply click on download install to get started and follow the prompts on the screen. Before we get started with a demonstration of how I use Screencast-O-Matic, I thought it might be nice to think about the different uses that this software can offer us um, within our class. Of course, the biggest uh, use for me is personalized feedback for students. Um, it's so easy to you can upload the videos directly in the discussion area. It makes those discussion areas more engaging, um, and it works out wonderfully for that purpose. But I also use Screencast-O-Matic to um, introduce certain tasks or milestones where um, you know I might know students have common pitfalls or um, might need a little bit more of an introduction um, or a, a demonstration of how to accomplish something, especially with software. Um, Screencast-O-Matic will record all of your actions within a specific application. So if you're demonstrating something in uh, Photoshop or Lightroom or AutoCAD, Revit, whatever it might be, uh, Screencast-O-Matic will record all of your actions. Um, I most recently used Screencast-O-Matic to record a brief welcome video for my courses. So instead of typed out uh, messages in that area, it now contains a Screencast-O-Matic recording, which I then have saved to the LOR and can upload to um, all of my future classes. And another interesting aspect about Screencast-O-Matic that you know, I've been thinking about is how I can use this to encourage student-to-instructor interaction or student-to-student -student feedback. Because it's so easy to use, there's a very uh, small learning curve to using the, the software, um, and it's free. So it's something to think about taking beyond just personalized feedback from us to our students. A few things to just think about before you start recording, of course, is knowing what you're going to say, knowing that the goal of your video is because there is a time limit. Um, you will want to record in a quiet place, of course, but as with any screen capturing software that also is recording audio, it will pick up on background noise. So using a microphone or a headset really helps um, to focus in on what you're saying and diminish any background noises. 
Um, something that sometimes I forget to think about is to close out of my email or any other pop-ups or notifications that might I might get, um, like Grasshopper or Skype or something like that, um, that can ruin uh, a good video. So it's really important to get in the habit of closing out of all of those applications when you're setting out to do your video feedback. Um, otherwise, Screencast-O-Matic will record whatever pop-ups um, are occurring on your screen during your video. During the recording, it's really important to keep your microphone at a uh, consistent distance, and that's really where the headset comes uh, in handy. Um, that way your voice isn't going up and down, your students are focusing on what you're saying and not having to worry about adjusting their volume settings. Um, and again, Screencast-O-Matic is going to capture your cursor, um, so you can definitely use that as a pointing tool or use any other tools in Adobe or whatever application you're using to review the student's work. Um, it will record all of those actions. After you're done recording, you're gonna see just how simple it is to save your new video as an MP4, um, some suggestions for file naming and where to save your recording uh, so you can re easily recall that and upload it to the classroom. So let's just go through a, a brief demonstration here. Um, with the uh, Screencast-O-Matic, this is the screen you're going to come to to download and install your, uh, your new software. And again, this is the free version, so you just click on down, Download, Install, and walk through those steps. Once you have it all downloaded, um, I would recommend that you pin it to your taskbar. That way, no matter what application you are reviewing your students' work in, you can go right to your taskbar to initiate the recording uh, through Screencast-O-Matic just by clicking on this icon here. So let's take a look at how this works in the classroom. Um, so I've just gone into one of my classrooms here. You can see I've got a video already uploaded there. Um, but the first thing that I would do to give you a sense of my workflow is, of course, download the student's file. Um, in this case, it's a PDF um, of their submission. And I might take a few moments to review it and think about what I'm going to say. Um, or I might uh, just initiate my recording and have a very candid walkthrough of their work, seeing it for the first time. Um, nevertheless, the process is the same. When I'm ready to start my recording, um, I will come down to my taskbar and click on the Screencast-O-Matic icon here. Uh, in this pop-up box, you want to choose Launch Free Recorder. That's the one that you've downloaded and installed. And then what you'll see is a very simplistic Screencast-O-Matic interface. The box here is um, contains some information that you want to look through. Um, it gives you the option of recording just your screen and no webcam, or just your webcam and no screen or both, you can record your screen and your webcam. So that's the first option that you wanna choose. It automatically defaults to the screen. Um, your max time for recording is 15 minutes. If you chose to upgrade to the next plan, you would have an unlimited time to um, record. But the free version offers 15 minutes, which to date I have found has been um, plenty sufficient to record that feedback for um, individualized students as well as group feedback. The size uh, refers to the recording size window. That's indicated by this black and white dash line around um, the edge of your screen. You can adjust it so you can pull it in and just frame it around the item that you want to record. So for instance, maybe I just want to have this slide showing. Um, and that's all that will record, or you can maximize it to your entire screen. So that might be more important for, um, let's say, a software demonstration, something like that. Um, but it's up to you how you want to um, frame, the, frame uh, the recording window. Let's just pull it back in here a little bit. 
Okay, um, so none of those actions will be recorded because you haven't started your recording yet. Um, initially, you want to make sure that your um, narration is coming through. So you will see by these flashing green bars here um, that the program is acknowledging it can hear me. So you just want to make sure that um, that is happening on your screen too before you get started. Uh, you can choose your microphones um, by clicking on this arrow if you need to switch between microphones. And that's basically it. There's not a whole lot of bells and whistles to get started recording. Like I said, it's very user-friendly and there's a very small learning curve. Uh, and once you're ready to start recording, you simply hit on the record button. And now a small countdown here, and then you're ready to record. It's now picking up anything I say and um, any actions I do with my cursor. And again, anything within the window is what is recording. So if I'm doing things outside of this dashed box here, it will not pick that up in the recording. So when you're done recording and you've reviewed your student's work, um, you simply click on the pause button here. There are a few options down at the bottom here. You can preview what you've recorded. Um, you can um, say you've paused and resumed at several points throughout your recording and you want to go back to a certain point and start your recording from that point. You can use um, these forwards and backwards buttons here to get to that point. You can actually trash the video if you're not happy with it and start everything over. Um, or if you're satisfied with it and done, you simply click on done. So once um, you click on done, you'll get this preview screen here of what you've recorded. And this is the point where you can actually do a few editing um, options. Say there's some um, dead space at the beginning of your video where nothing was said, you can click and drag on this to cut that portion out. Um, and you can do the same at the end too. So say that there's some extra seconds at the end where you want to cut out um, nothing important was said or nothing at all was said, you can cut that out. Okay, um, so not a whole lot of editing options, but again, if you that's something that you're interested in, um, for a small fee, you can upgrade the software to the next plan level. Um, your options here are to save as the video file, which is the option we're going to choose. You can also upload to Screencast-O-Matic. That's their server. Um, I believe you will have limitations on how much you can store there. And I honestly haven't found the need to store student feedback um, on their server or through YouTube um, because my workflow consists of saving my files, my video files for feedback to my desktop. And then at the end of a task or at the end of a milestone, I simply delete them off my computer. Um, because a video has been uploaded to the classroom, there's a permanent record of it in the classroom. Should I need to recall it again? Or um, I will have the option to download it directly from the classroom if I needed to. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But as I said, you want to choose on Save As, the video file. You will see it um, defaults to an MP4, which is perfect. That's what we need. The file name, I would um, recommend renaming this, perhaps the student's name, uh, the milestone and, and task number, just so you can identify that file easily when you go to upload it. Um, as I said, I upload all mine to the desktop because it's just a temporary holding place for me. Um, and then that's basically it. Then I would just click on publish and depending on the size of your file, may take a few seconds or a few moments to convert that to your PM4 um, and it will show you when it's done with a green check mark. Okay, so after this I would simply click on done and then my file was saved to the desktop. So the next step in the workflow would be to get the video into the classroom um, and we can directly upload this video to the classroom because it's an mp4 file through insert stuff um, and I'll show you how to do that here um, I just want you to note that if you are trying to upload files with different um, extensions or different file types they're going to show up as a as a link in the classroom instead of a video and we want to avoid that when you go to upload your video, you will have the choice to set the aspect ratio, and I'm giving my suggestion here 700 by 393. This is so the video is not too small. Um, it is viewable at that size, but yet it's not so large that the students 
will have to scroll side to side. So if you set it higher than 700, your students will get a scroll bar and they will need to uh, scroll side to side to see the entire video. Um, on the flip side, if no size is selected, then again, the video is gonna show up as only a link and we really uh, want to see the videos show up as a video frame in the threads rather than just the link. So let's take a look at the process of uploading the, the uh, video file um, from Screencast-O-Matic into the discussion area or the threads. So um, as typical, we click on reply. I'm, I might um, include some text here about what I'm going to talk about in the video or uh, maybe some positive feedback or what I want them to work on, whatever it might be. Um, and then when I'm ready to insert my video, uh, this is where I go to insert stuff and I come to uh, my computer and choose file. And this is where it's really important to know how you saved your file, where you saved it, and the name. Um, I believe that was it. And then we click on Open and Upload. Okay, so I've already uploaded uh, a file with this name, so that's why I'm getting this duplicate files message. Um, so try not to label your files the same name, otherwise you might get the same um, comment here. Um, Let's just click on upload. And then you'll specify some link text. Again, I just keep it consistent as what I named my file. And then I specify my file size. And then click on insert. Okay, so now you can see the video within um, the dialog box here. Okay, so it's in line, it's not a link. And then when I'm done and ready to post, I'd simply click on post. But like I said, I've already uploaded a video here for this particular student. So this is what it looked like. Um, I had typed in some text for her and uh, I used insert stuff to um, upload my video directly into the thread uh, rather than a link. So if I scroll up a little bit, you'll see some additional feedback in videos throughout this discussion area, which um, I think makes it a, a bit more dynamic than just having text in and links. So again, just in review, the video should be viewable within the discussion area, avoid the links. Um, students can enlarge the video once published to a classroom using the button in the lower right hand corner of the video. Um, so let's take a look at that real quick to seeing the same video um, that I previously uploaded. Um, they can uh, click the play button, of course. If they are, are viewing this video for the 17th time, let's say, uh, we can they can um, fast forward and uh, rewind as they see fit. They can um, adjust the volume here. Um, the biggest icon to call out to your students' attention is they do have the ability to make it full screen right here. So if they click on that, they get a full screen view of your recording. To get back to the discussion area, they can hit escape or they can click on the icon again. They can click on this icon again and it will go back. Um, and then you can also uh, inform them that if it's something they want to save and maybe come back to later uh, without having to go through the discussion area again to find your feedback, they can actually download it and save it to their computer. Um, so there are some options there to make your students aware of. Okay, so, um, and then here I just suggested maybe uh, an announcement or some, um, maybe part of your instructor notes showing them how to enlarge to full screen uh, to help avoid any frustration if they're unsure how to do that. And lastly, just a few important notes. Um, this direct upload method that I showed you does not allow us as instructors to generate a usage report. So we won't be able to see how many times uh, the students view your video. Um, if that is something that you're looking for and need to track playback or usage, I would encourage you to use the capture tool and um, publish the video to Capture Central instead. 
So that is a brief overview of uh, Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, if you have any questions, I've included my email address here. Please feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to help. Otherwise, thanks for viewing the session, and I hope you enjoy using Screencast-O-Matic.